We're continuing the series on 3D world generation and implementing planetary level of detail. That means we'll extend the previous quad tree project into a full scale planet. Long shots from a distance are pretty neat, but wouldn't it be even cooler if you could go further? Entire planets generated on the fly with the ability to not only see from space, but all the way to the ground. In the last tutorial, we covered a way to get level of detail using quad trees, which increased the resolution closer to the camera while using low resolution meshes for far away. Combining that with some sort of Perlin or simplex noise in fractional Brownian motion, what that gave us was effectively an infinite procedural world in every direction. What we're covering today is going to expand on that, but instead of an infinite plane in every direction, we're wrapping the terrain over a sphere, giving us a planet scale system. Basically, we want to go from a plane to a sphere, and there's probably a whole bunch of ways to get this done. I opted for what I thought would be the simplest route, and I'll dynamically tessellate a cube using quad trees. My idea being that if you start with a cube and tessellate it, you can pull the vertices into a sphere shape. So the first thing I'll be doing is creating a new class, which I'll call a cube tree. And all this will do is manage the six sides of the cube, creating a quad tree for each one. Now to get this working, I want to try and just get a single side working properly. So what I'll do first is prevent the quad tree from creating any new children, and this will effectively just turn it into a single plane. That way, I can go into the terrain code here, and it has to be updated so that it gets not just the children for the quad tree, but all the children for each quad tree for each face of the cube, and modify any other code that might rely on that. Once that's done, I can confirm it's all working by going into the browser, and all we should see now is a single plane with terrain on it, which is what we're seeing. This is working properly, and the next step will be to get all the other sides working. To get all of the other sides rendering, we need to go back into the cube tree and define more sides. Now, one thing to note here is that although the first side rendered, to get a cube, we need to rotate each of these quad trees. So we'll go ahead and add transforms for each side so that they face the appropriate direction. So for each side, we define a rotation so that the quad tree faces that axis, and we have positive x, negative x, positive y, negative y, positive z, and negative z. Loading it up, they're all facing the right way, but obviously they're all centered at the origin, so next we need to go back to the transforms we define, and we need to translate by the radius of the sphere we want to create. And now we have a cube. Let's make that into a sphere, which will serve as the base for our planet. What I did here was I rewrote the mesh generation code because previously we were using 3GS to generate the plane and then we'd loop over it and adjust the height. But now we need to adjust every single vertex to sit on the surface of the sphere and it's simpler and easier to write our own code that just does it in a single pass. What the code here does is generates a position on the plane and then calculates the direction to the origin or 000. Once you have the direction, you can scale the vector by the radius of the sphere and now you've curved this plane to the surface of the sphere. Here's an example. You start with this plane here, tessellate it a bit so that you have some vertices to work with, and then if you define the center of the sphere at some distance from the plane, you can drag the vertices towards it. That's with a single face. With six faces, you do the same thing and you end up with a sphere. One problem, as you might have noticed, when I switch wireframe mode off and you can see each of the faces, they're all identical, just rotated for each side of the cube. The colors for each face, in other words, the landscape, is identical. And that's because originally the terrain was 2D, so we only sampled the noise based on the XY coordinate of each vertex, which works fine when the terrain is restricted to a plane. Since this is a sphere now, we need to modify how we sample the noise so that each vertex looks it up in 3D. We'll need to make modifications in a few places. The noise code needs to change to accept 3D coordinates, and we need to pass a world space coordinate when generating the noise. Back in the mesh generation code, getting world space coordinates is really simple since it's exactly the same transform that's applied in the vertex shader. We use the transform defined in the cube tree, which are passed through to each terrain chunk, and we apply the matrix here as the coordinates are generated, giving us world space coordinates. Let's confirm the working by transforming the direction vector and outputting that as a color. When we load it up in the browser, we were expecting to see smooth red, green, blue across the sphere which is what we see. So that means we can now go ahead with the changes to the noise to make it 3D. This isn't that involved since the simplex noise library has both 2D and 3D functions. We just switch the 2D call for a 3D one and change a few spots around the code that take X and Y to add Z. 
And now the terrain coloring shows up smoothly across the planet. To make the terrain height map work again, in the mesh generation code, you have this direction vector here, which defines the direction from the center of the sphere to the vertex on the plane. If you scale this by the height at that point and add it to the vertex, you end up with a height map sphere. Okay, so the sphere is working, the terrain is properly height mapped, and the coloring is all working again. The last step here is to get the quad tree working again so that we get level of detail depending on the position of the camera. The first thing we want to do here is add an easy way to debug this. So we're separating out the camera that's used to view from the camera that's used for level of detail. So as we create the terrain, we create this fake user camera that's passed in. And the terrain uses that to decide when to do level of detail. I'll also instantiate a little sphere where that camera is so that we know where it is and we can visualize it. To get the quad tree working again, we'll go back and turn it on and allow it to create child nodes again. Surprisingly, with just that, we kind of get some results, although this is pretty broken. The problem is that we're not using the offset of each quad tree node when generating the vertices, so in the mesh generation code, this amounts to adding the offset to the vertex before we map it back to the surface of the sphere. If we modify the little sphere to orbit the planet a bit, you'll notice that the level of detail calculations seem to be pretty off. They're not happening where you'd expect, which is right by the sphere. The reason is that each side of the cube, each quad tree, calculates the distance from the node to the position of the camera, but this is all done in their local space. These calculations now need to be done in the same space, so an easy fix here is to create a sphere center for each node, and that's the world space center, and that's done by applying the local to world transform to bring it into world space, and then mapping it to the sphere surface again like we do with the vertices. Once that's done, we can see that the level of detail now seems to be coming in right where that little sphere is. You can see a lot of resolution right by where that little sphere is, and then the rest of the planet is pretty low resolution, so this is working properly. And so there we have it. We modified our previous quad tree implementation to do level of detail over an entire planet. And I can modify the size of this planet however big or small I want. See, I can just jack up the radius here and we end up with a much larger planet. And we can zoom in and we retain the detail all the way to the surface. Source code is all available on GitHub, so go ahead and fork it and tweak it or add to it, do whatever you want with it. Make sure to hit like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.